little different video today. It's going to become a topic of discussion. Not sure when or if iRacing is going to get to this, but splitting oval, just like they did with road. What's the best way to go about it? Is it even necessary? Um, in my mind, it doesn't matter one way or the other. Uh, I race everything. So it the split on the roadside doesn't really make a difference to me, even though I've only been racing formula. But on the oval side where I run a lot, doesn't bother me one way or the other. I don't see a need for it, but I understand why some do. Uh, I know that a lot of people are scared of running short tracks because they're protecting their SR. They don't want to get into something that they don't fully understand or are not as good at and lose their I rating. But I think as I've shown over the last four years, you just, it balances out. You get to a point and you're you're gonna go up and down, but it's not like you're gonna drop to 2000 and never return. So how do we go about this? How do we split the oval license? Do you do it by track? Kind of like we do with dirt. I'm gonna say absolutely not. That has been for series that run paved and dirt and road. Uh, we've seen that this is a horrible system because dirt weekends and road re weekends, the points get completely skewed and normal top splits are 50, 80 points less than they normally would be, even though you're racing the same people. It's one of those things where I don't know how you balance it out because you don't have a fixed point system. So basing it on I rating has kind of ruined those weekends. So in SRX right now, the paved oval drivers have an advantage over the dirt drivers because we have more rounds of paved racing where our I rating is higher and we are doing better. Whereas dirt, our I ratings lower, we're losing less points in the system. And it's just, it's a funky system that just really doesn't work when you don't have a fixed point system. So is splitting gonna help that if we do it by track type where we say, oh, short tracks, everything under a mile is a short track. Everything above is oval. Uh, no, that's not going to help. So what I think needs to be done is kind of like road racing where they've went to car type. But then you get into weird situations where what car type are you going to go with? Is NASCAR and IndyCar who race on big tracks mostly, do those fit together? Not really. Are you going to have NASCAR people that want to run IndyCar but don't want to affect their I rating for that? So you're going to run into issues like that. You also have like the Silver Crown. This is a short track car even though we have the speedway version of it does it really fit to be over in nascar and indycar where the sprint car a level lower than it is over in the short tracks so you run into little problems like that what needs to happen and what's going to be the easiest way to do it is go with traditional ladders where you have short track vehicles you have nascar and then you have the open wheel, USAC and IndyCar. But I think it makes more sense to follow those traditional lines of progression rather than saying track only or car type only. That will be more in line with what happens in the real world. Then the next problem you have is NASCAR. You don't have rookie NASCAR, there, that's not a thing. You still start out at the short track. You have to just kind of forget about that level for NASCAR and say rookie level, ARCA, East and West. No, I know first thing everyone's going is, wait, we don't have a rookie car that can be free. If iRacing scans the new ARCA car and we are getting these new Gen 4 cars, how about we just take this current ARCA car and make it free? But wait, we don't have a whole lot of free big tracks. Chicagoland, Auto Club, Twin Ring, which should be free for both the road and uh, oval because it just lacks participation. 
these are tracks that are no longer on the base NASCAR schedule, so people are going to be less likely to ever buy them. You add those three to the free list, and you have a better rookie level series for ARCA East West, and then Class D is ARCA series with the new bodies, and then you progress up to Class A with Cup series. <laughs> On the short track side, uh, Legends and Street Sox, put them at Rookie, Rookie D, flip them around, whatever, and then all of your short track cars. And then on the IndyCar license, maybe we get Midgets. We were talking about a paved version of the Micro Midget, put that there. Then you've got Sprint Car Silver Crown, USF Pro uh, and 2000, then the IndyCar, and uh, you have your licenses. So I, I'm just winging this on uh, voice right now and going to make overlays for it. So I might have missed a few steps in the ladders as I'm saying it, but I think you got to split it up into three in order to make people happy. And I think the only way that you can do that is based off of that traditional progression that you see in the real life because nascar and indycar not the same not the same skill set completely different type of racing and just combining those it seems like if we're gonna split it why not split it correctly why keep two vehicles together in the same license that don't really match up you either keep it all oval short track and big tracks IndyCar, NASCAR or you split it up and make it into a better system than it is because if you're not making it better then why are we even doing it so uh, that is that is my thoughts on it um, you know what's the best way it's all all based on personal feelings I don't care one way or the other but if we're gonna do it make it make sense um, on the roadside it makes sense because you don't have I mean you do still have some issues with prototypes and GTs but you kind of progress through those in the real world and the formula series that's common sense of the lower class to higher class uh, it just gets tricky with oval because NASCAR feeds off of the short track stuff, but short track also has its higher level stuff and touring series, uh, such as the tour mods, cars tour, and uh, you know sprint cars, silver crown. So how you do it, I think you got to split it into three, and um, yeah. That's, that's the only way I can come up with making it work. But is it necessary? From my view, no. Uh, let me know, though. I, I want to I hear what everyone else thinks. Do you care about it? Would you race short tracks more if it had its own license? Would you race IndyCar more if it had its own license? Are you more of a NASCAR person? Are you more of an IndyCar person? what holds you back from racing on the oval side if anything at all so um yeah just a little bit of a ramble there but i think the three-way split is the way to go so let me know your thoughts thanks for watching